I try to compose it fam to, to sound familiar, but yeah. I always try to write different music. Uh, it is music for, made by me. I hope that the audience always knows, oh, this is Ostermann, but yeah. it sounds different because uh, the story is always different. Oliver, it's uh, so lovely to talk Good to you. And, yes. um, and I would love to hear about this new opera you're doing, the, the opera you wrote. Okay, I wrote... Yeah. Yes, I wrote a new, a new opera. Uh, it is a musical opera style, and it is a, a work for the theater in Chemnitz again. And yeah. it is it's the story. The story is called Spuk und dem Riesenrad. For mm -hmm. the English audience, I've tried to translate it a little bit. It is called yeah. Spooky Under the Ferris Wheel. It is, it is the story about... Uh, three children they spend the holidays with their grandparents and these grandparents are owners of a ghost train and in this ghost train there live uh, three wooden figures it is the giant the witch and the dwarf well known as Rumpelstiltchen yeah. and Rumpelstiltchen is, uh, is, is, is someone from the from the uh, fairy tale uh, Snow White and Rose Red. I don't know. Is this is mm. this uh, f fairy tale well known in America or in in the English um, uh, part of the, the world? Uh, it's a story uh, about the, uh, from the Crystal Brother. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's called. I cannot remember now what it's called in English. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's a known. I think it's known... it has, has another name. Yeah. So we are a little bit in, in, in into the woods <laughs> from yeah. by Stephen Sondheim uh, with this uh, <laughs> people from the fairy tales. Yeah. So and but these three figures are wooden, so they can't move only by technical uh, things, and they are bewitched because they were human beings long time ago, centuries ago in the medieval era, and the wizards bewitch them because they were very cruel to other people and they can only be redeemed when they change their life when they become humans again so they have to contact with water and the three children in the ghost dream have to clean this ghost dream and they make some nonsense and the and these uh, figures became become wet and so they come to life again they begin okay. to uh, begin to live again or come to life again and uh, they try to do their spooky things like uh, in the time where they were uh, human beings and a big hunt begins through whole Germany and only the, the, the children and their grandfather are able to catch them and bring them back to the ghost train and even not the police is possible to do it, not the fire brigade, not anyone. So this is an adventure story. Yeah. Uh, for for the family. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, but now these figures, they are wooden figures. When they are, when they, uh, when they're now doing all these uh, things in Germany. No, when when they begin to do these bad things again, they are humans again. They are humans. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So okay. So then they are caught, and then um, and and what happened to them then? Sorry, I didn't know, I understand so when this they, now. When they got caught, so the, the, the children and the grandfather caught them again. Yes, they caught yeah. them again. The giant uh, uh, doesn't become wooden again because he changed his life. Yeah. He wants to save the children because the dwarf uh, wants to wants to f catch them and then wants to be cruel because he wants to, to, to reign over the whole world. <laughs> and... Yeah. And the witch uh, always uh, helps the giant, so they can stay humans. But uh, Rumpelstiltchen uh, is bad and crazy, and he has to be wooden again for all the time, till, till the end of the world. But listen, my question is just why was this not ever made in a movie? Because it sounds so adventurous. It was a movie. It was a movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was a movie in the DDR time. Yeah. Uh, in Germany, East Germany, uh, decades ago, it is a cult series. It's a series about this uh, story, and 
uh, the theater in Germany uh, asked me to to compose a piece for for stage. They didn't mm -hmm. say compose an opera or compose an, a musical. Uh, the last interview we spoke about this problem: what, which kind of music, what kind of yeah. theater do you do you create? I, I cr I'm creating actually uh, musical theater. So I didn't uh, think do I compose now opera or musical. I wrote the the piece. Uh, I had a wonderful author and librettist. It uh, his name is um, Thomas Winter. He comes from Berlin. And he's stage director and writes texts, and he's wonderful. Oh, we so speak he... one language, we speak this stage language, theater language, so yeah. we could uh, handle very good. But um, so that he wrote the the lyrics to the to the songs, then. Yes, he wrote the lyrics to the songs. He wrote the story again because this yeah. series is so long, and we had to decide uh, which periods, the, what what we want to what we uh, want to take from the story. Yeah, and so we took the story from these uh, three figures because yeah. the series long is another story, is another story, and story stories about other things, and we thought that this. Uh, the story about these three wooden figures is the best to bring yeah. it on stage. And now, when is it? What is the time setting? You know, when when is it set? Uh, in what era is it set? Now it is now here where we live. Oh, oh in our, really? Our yeah. time, yeah. yeah. Oh, but this is going to be so exciting, and uh, also for for children. It's a family. Yeah. It's a family um, opera. It's a family opera, yes. Yeah. Uh, the style of the music is very adult. Mm -hmm. I think it's very many I mean, a huge crowd on the stage with opera choir, children's choir. The the children, the three children, are really children and not adults who play children. Mm -hmm. It was very important for us. Yeah. And because when I was a child, I saw uh, children's theater. And there were no children on stage. Sometimes one child or two children were on stage, and I was happy because I could see myself on stage now. And I think that is so important that we do that. You know that um, that children can have somebody to relate to when they go to the theater and they absolutely. see them. I think it, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, uh, absolutely right. Yes. Mm. Because it is true that sometimes you you go to the theater and the child is being played by an adult, and you know in a in certain actually certain children's operas you know they they use but of course probably because of the the scene. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Sometimes a problem with the music because yeah. you want to to have them to make them sing in a very high quality mm -hmm. uh, mode. And children are, are not able to sing arias or pop yeah. songs or anything. So many uh, stage directors or composers or the librettists uh, decide to take uh, adults for mm -hmm. these roles. My last family opera I wrote was a story about the fire brigade uh, in mm -hmm. Germany. And it was very, very... Uh, um, the people were very enthusiastic about mm -hmm. this piece and it's a story about the fabricate uh, who wants always to make a coffee break but it is not able they are not able to make a coffee break because the telephone <laughs> rings all the time oh, okay. and, and they have to do their job and there is one role of a, of a girl who breaks into the ice in, yeah. in, in winter on the sea and they have to to, to bring them out and carry them, uh, bring them to the hospital. And, mm -hmm. and there we decided to take a young uh, adult singer, a, uh, she was, she's, she's a soprano, soprano mm -hmm. an opera soprano, but she she seemed to be like a child on stage. Uh, Only when she sang, you would heard, okay, this is a, yeah. a, a professional singer. Yeah. But this was the only time I walked this way, mm -hmm. decided to do this way, because we had no other chance to do it. Mm. But now in this new piece, we decided to take children for children's roles. Mm. It will be wonderful. 
Yeah, no, I I totally agree. And um, and the story also, this adventure and this this fantasy world, um, this uh, this really uh, uh, fairy tale world. Actually, I think it's also a great a great storyline. You know, to do it that way. Yeah. Yes. But um, and now tell me um, the sound of the the music that you because Schatten Kaiserin. Kaiserin, yes. Um, I told you when I listened to the music, it sounded so familiar. It sounded so easy to listen to. Is this the same type of music that you're writing? I try to compose it fam to to sound familiar, but yeah. I always try to write different music. Uh, it is music from, made by me. I hope that the audience always knows, oh, this is Ostermann, but yeah. it sounds different because uh, the story is always different. Schattenkaiserin plays in the time of, uh, of, uh, of the medieval era. And uh, the, 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 the Spuk unterm Riesenrad, Spuk uh, under the Ferris wheel, uh, plays now. So I have to to take totally different music styles. There is only one scene in my new piece where the grandfather tells the children uh, why or how these three figures became wooden figures. And it's a, a song or the melodrum and with pantomime and so. And there I go to the, the, to the uh, medieval style, spooky style, older style. So there I can say maybe that it sounds a little bit like Schattenkaiserin because oh, it is another, another time. It is cent uh, centuries ago. And then we switch back to the, to the uh, 21st century and we have totally different music. I think that the music of my new piece of uh, this now uh, piece could be, you can could call it, Big show, film, Broadway musical. Really, mm. yes. but it's amazing that you use the music, or that that you use the the style of the music to to go back to a different time period. You know that you um, so so that means that even if you don't see it, you, and you he, just hear it, it it will. You have to feel. Do you have to feel it? Yeah. You have to feel. I I, I think that the audience first listens and then it has yeah. to feel yeah uh, i think there is one word uh ludwig, ludwig van beethoven said mm -hmm. from heart to heart oh yeah yeah he always wanted to compose this way and uh the other composer i'm i really adore is richard wagner mm -hmm. he he his receipt was to compose in this way that the drama comes from the orchestra from the music mm. Mm. and that's not from from the story yeah? and this is this is the way film music movies work the movie uh, the, the music film music works mm. the same kind like Richard Wagner the drama mm. begins in the music when you watch a movie without music I often heard had this because I had to to compose music for short movies and you get this movie without any sound it is so boring yeah it's so boring and then you begin to compose and and music begins to live and suddenly uh, you you feel the scene and so I think the same uh, we should do the th same in the theater even too Richard Wagner began with this some then we lost all this a little bit. Then came the avant-garde, and and now we come. I think we come back to this to this uh, kind of musical theater. Mm. But now um, you are doing so much work. You are um, busy with so many things. Um, where does it come from? Does it? Uh, where do these melodies come from in your head? I think it's the technical background. Uh, first and then a little bit inspiration um, and you have to be hot <laughs> uh, okay. you have to burn all your life even, uh, especially when you are a creative type of, of artist uh, 
last month I was very sick. I had cancer and was lying in, in, the, in the hospital. And uh, during the chemotherapy, I was not able even to speak or to do anything because I was so tired. But in my brain, in my mind, I had so many ideas what I could do. And I didn't know how to do it, but I knew, technically I knew how to do it, but I didn't know how to, to find people to realize it. But there was the, the, the idea at first. And so I think this is the way I work. With a huge technical background, I learned, I, I studied eight, eight years, for eight years, 16 semesters. I was at first, my first instrument was my voice. I, um, I was a singer, baritone, classical baritone, then piano, um, composing, and then I started orchestral conducting because I always wanted to conduct my pieces on my own because I was not, I never was happy with, 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 with other conductors. So I wanted to have the technical background to stand in front of the musicians, in front of the orchestra and to conduct my own music. Well, I, I was a uh, first conductor for 17 years on a theater in Austria. Then I had uh, experiences in America, on, on America tours with big, wonderful orchestras with the Chicago Philharmonic Orchestra and so on. And for a very long time, I was only conductor and I composed by the way, but not for, for my, to, to earn my money, only for my choice and for my joy. And um, my choice was then uh, in 2018 to leave the theater, to become only com a composer, a composer who conducts. Ah, so okay. mm -hmm. and I had, I have this technical background, so it, I decided to go uh, this way. Well, I spoke to a pianist, uh, well, a comp also a composer, a young composer a um, uh, while ago, and I asked him this question as well, uh, well, that you are saying now that you wanted to conduct your own music. Yes. Yeah. And, and he said that also that he, he loves to play his own music because he knows how it's intended to sound. And so now you say... Yes, yes, yes. This is... Uh... I can understand this very good. When he composes, I don't know which instrument does he play? A piano. Well, piano okay. and cello, yeah. Piano and cello. But when you're composing operas, <laughs> you cannot play every instrument. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I decided to, to become conductor because as conductor, you play every instrument. Yeah, and yeah, you, can, yeah. you, can, you can tell them how to play and conduct and you can bring it in, into this mood where you uh, where you uh, first uh, wanted to to sound this music. Yeah, well, yeah, this this makes uh, sense, and it's it's then the because that is also sometimes I hear that, uh, somebody says, while well, you listen to other recordings or you listen to other. Uh, orchestras playing and then you they they uh, understand how it's supposed to sound so if you have done it and you have uh, conducted it then uh, then there is how you wanted it to sound then it's there the, yeah. the, the example because, is in there so it is it's very important for me to to have recordings of my music uh, actually three days ago a new album appeared on, on on CD and on Spotify and all streaming portals, Apple Music, YouTube, I don't know where, worldwide. Uh, but my last family opera, it is a, a full recording, a live recording. I was conducting it 2019, in December 2019. And I'm very happy that everyone can now listen to this music because um, uh, some theaters think about to play it even too and so they can hear how I imagined how my music should sound the tempo and the style and yes there are so many things between the notes you cannot write into the, the score so uh, this was my it was very important for me to have this recording and what is this recording about? What is this? Uh, is it, 
this is this is a story about the fire brigade uh oh, yes. family yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah 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 and now um and what is the next um uh work that next you're project? doing oh, next uh, the, project Actually, my actual project is a CD project. It's a, co it's a concert project. It is a CD, a Christmas CD, but in a very unusual way. Um, I have invited and got, thank God, I got these wonderful artists, very uh, famous Austrian classical artists. I got uh, Lydia Baic, a violinist, Adalian Auna, he's the, the first uh, violinist of the Auna Quartet in Vienna, and Florian Krumberg, a very well known uh, concert pianist and conductor in Austria, even in Germany. And uh, we have some speakers, very important speakers, famous speakers. Barbara Wussow, she's uh, very important and famous in, in Germany and Austria. And with her husband, Albert Fodell, he's always a famous uh, actor and Josef Langwiesner, he comes from Linz. He was actor in Linz on the theater, but he has a wonderful voice. And this, the singers are uh, on this city is uh, Daniela Fari. Oh, I know her, yeah. Oliver State Opera. She became a camera singerin uh, last, in, in, uh, I think, uh, in the last half year. And Jörg Schneider from the State Opera and Christina Sidak. Mm. Yes, they have I've written music and composed music for in, in, in the summer, during the summer in, in August uh, for this CD. And we recorded the, the, the instrumental parts in September. And in November, we will record now the speakers and the rest of the um, instrumental parts and the singers. Amazing. And when will this now be released then? It will be released in the beginning of September. Not in December, in sorry. December, okay. Yes. So it's, it will release a CD and as a streaming. And is it a Christmas? Is it, has it got a Christmas? Uh... It's not. It's an unusual Christmas city because we tell the story from the from the Genesis, from the beginning of the Bible till the till the apocalypse. Uh, the Bible, the Bible in forty five minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> And with the birth of Jesus Christ, and and um, yes. And how? Who wrote this? The who text. Wrote the, the, the text. The text was written by a very good friend of my me. Uh, he's Johann Schlipfinger. He's a tuba player, and composer too. He wrote two pieces, uh, two two songs, uh, three songs, for this city, and I arranged it so that it is familiar with the, my my own style how i compose in this project and he he invited the speakers and he created with the speakers then the text again he oh. recreated mm. so it is, it is a, a teamwork project yeah but this is uh this is unusual to have it like uh, with speakers together with speakers or is it something that you do often i think it is like a like a book to listen okay with mm. music you have music then you have the text and we again music and it goes hand hand in hand uh mm. the music follows the text the text follows the music okay. as... yeah but oliver you do really exciting works you do very interesting things and uh uh, it's uh, it's amazing to to know that it comes up, you know that you you have all these ideas and you say that it's it's you, I understand that you say it's about the technical background but it's always do you ever feel do you ever get to a day where you just think no I there's nothing that comes nothing uh, I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> like a writer's block or something. Do you have a composer's block? Uh, I have no composer block. No. Really? Uh, maybe I should create a composer block. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, I'm. I'm. I'm a technical freak too. Oh, okay. I learned it by myself because this kind of work is you cannot study anywhere you can study film music and but 
I wanted to go my own way. I come from the absolutely classical background. I did not learn anything about pop music or jazz or rock music or musical. Um, after my studies, I began to conduct all this music and I fell in love. So I am a composer who combines all the styles, the classical style with my huge classical background with pop musical and, and rock music and everything. And so I think there is very, there are many possibilities to uh, compose for a very long time. And so I think that I will never lose my ideas. Oh, and my fire. Yeah. <laughs> my fire. Yeah. Sometimes I'm very tired and I have some weeks where I do nothing. But yeah. then some ideas come and I take the telephone and call some artists or producers and tell them what I want to do. And, and sometimes it works, sometimes it works not. Mm. We have five ideas and one, ideas come, uh, one idea comes through. Mm. Well, it's it's. I think it's always this um, this time where you a, a little bit uh, quieter, where where these ideas come, and like you say, then you just have to explore and see which ones work. Yes, yeah. I'm. I'm sure. I'm sure, I'm very quiet. Very much time in my life. Uh, oh, really? Mm. And then when I find my the. The way how I can realize it, then I began to burn, and I'm very enthusiastic. Yeah. From my basic kind, I'm a very not I'm not not a loud person. I'm a very introverted introverted uh, person, and I had to learn to go to people and speak with them. I was very shy, and I'm yeah. very shy basically. But you can, as conductor, I had to learn it, to go to people and to make them and to be loud and and to be very expressive. But this is not my my basic uh, kind in my life. My yeah, your nature. Well, this is um, uh, but yeah, this is also sometimes that thing where you have to get out of that comfort zone and just ask, you know, and. Mm. And and then so that other things can happen as well. Now I understand that very well. It's very funny. Uh, people ask me very often, uh, "How can you get all these jobs?" I said, "I don't know. Every every time I, I wanted uh, when I wanted to get a job, it doesn't it didn't work. They always called me, and now I two days ago." Uh, I, I, got, I got a phone call from the Austrian television because there are uh, some shows, the Golden Rute. I don't know how you, did you, how, do you know, know this. No, no it's, it's a talent show for classical music. It is a competition uh, for young classical musicians from children till from, from five till I know, don't know, 18, 19. And there are very important um, uh, artists in the jury, uh, like Alina Carancha or uh, Piotr Pechawa or, or uh, Andreas Schaga. And so they asked me to, to realize uh, some important music for their, for their, uh, for their, for their ensembles. Sometimes you have to have only a, one violinist and a, and a piano player and a singer. Can you make it happen uh, from this huge orchestral part of from the opera or the operetta? Create a new style uh, for in this for this number that we can send it in in the, in the television. So this is very very interesting work because and I like it because it is for young students. And yeah. I was happy when I was a young student, even I was <laughs> young uh, many years ago. And I was happy when when older artists uh, did something for me and yeah. helped me. And so I want to only want to give back what I got. Well, this is, yeah, this is true. And that, you know, that um, opportunity that they then have and I think they also when you're young and you get that opportunity to work 
with somebody older, you learn also in that process, you know, and it's that. Absolutely, yes. That yes. Connect, yeah. Now uh, that you're saying that you, you, uh, it's interesting for you to uh, help also younger, but for somebody who's interested in composing, what would you say is the best route to go oh. to study composing? Compose, begin to compose. Really? I would love to work with young composers. Uh, mm -hmm. Two weeks ago, I think a young uh, female composer contacted me on Facebook. She wanted to to know some things about the business and, and so, and she was very happy that she found a composer who who, who writes music in a very familiar way. Mm -hmm. How you how you said, uh, uh, and I could give you some things back and say okay you're right stay on your mode and and, and stay stay in this kind you you write because this is the best thing you can do it because when you want to uh, hear music you can every, everybody wants to hear different music but as composer you have to write this music which music you want to hear and I oh, could yeah. tell her something, and I would be very happy to find young composers who come to me and ask me, because I can. I think I could give them so much back and, and many, many inputs, without uh, make too much too much influence uh, uh, how they could compose. And I, I would not tell them uh, about anything about the style to change the style, but. Uh, it would be nice to, to see how they compose and and say beautiful things to them and then say this is a new way you could go or go this way because this is because this could be very inspiring for me too mm. yeah and it could uh, you know for somebody who's maybe not so uh, confident in themselves you know to just mm -hmm be heard by somebody and say well yes that's that's good or carry on or i think I, that's even also, would, I even would invite composers to make projects with me together why not yeah why not yeah we always hear we always hear that that nowadays uh, there are no composers or there's no art that's not true yeah said never there was never a time when uh, when music was when so much music was written like today mm. wonderful yeah. composers even there are composers who make it only for themselves they want to be composers are not composers but there are so many fantastic artists on this planet now yeah i was more actually, than ever i i can totally understand that because i mean i just see if i just see i discover on instagram for example young so like this young pianist who yeah. wrote um uh you know the, the cello and the piano mm -hmm. and it was a little it was these little videos that he posts on instagram and it's mm -hmm. basically he's it's nothing the, the the film that he makes it's it's you know it's just the piano and it's this big room and he and he plays these tunes and i for me, I, as I say, I'm not a musician and I cannot judge, but I can only feel, mm -hmm. you know, or hear, or, mm -hmm. and then it, it, and then it sounds so good. And I think, okay, you have to, we have to talk and just see, understand where does this come from? Why do you compose this? Or where are you from? Or, you know, because then maybe somebody else will hear and somebody else might want to play his music or, something you know so uh, that's the whole yeah. idea that i have you know is that i, I yeah and also maybe, young maybe young, it's good. yeah maybe it's very good that you are not a professional musician because yeah. you can feel it in the right way because musicians like me even too i begin to analyze everything when i listen something and this is a this is often a very big problem for 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 me because I have lost this natural uh, input from from the music. I live on cloud nine. That's why I just things 
you know, I find things very, simple things very beautiful. But it's so lovely to talk to you always. And uh, whenever you are in the in the area, let me know. We can grab a coffee. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.